This week on Most Craved... Don't mess with Doctor Doom. The Evil Dead is getting its own series. Yep, and we're here. And unless, these guys. Yeah, unless we've stumbled into the wrong studio. Is this Jeopardy? You're, yes. Yeah, I, I'm going to take American presidents for a hundred. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Most Craved. I'm William Bibiani with Crave Online. I'm Jenna Bush with Legion of Leia. And joining us today are Lee Winnell and Angus Sampson from the new movie The Mule. You may know them from Insidious, but they have a new movie that's about not pooping. So. It literally is about that. Tell us a little bit about this movie. Is that what you call it? Pooping? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. You're at home or yeah. at a restaurant and you say, I have to go poop. I have to poop. <laughs> I, well, I used that's that. That's the term. When I was yeah. a, when I was a kid, I actually used to say I have to take a bowel movement, and everyone was like, "You're a kid, you should say poop." Well, what's the language policy on this show? Oh, you can say whatever the hell you want. Oh yeah. yeah. So if I was yeah. to say it's about a guy not taking a shit, that would be fine. That would be fine. It's fine with us. Oh, excellent. Unless, unless it's got beeped in post, well, I think we're well, fine. What if we were to show you? <laughs> <laughs> Then does yeah, it stray? That might, then we might need a little bar over that. <laughs> sure. Well, it is interesting well, describing the plot for this film because the film is loosely based on a true story. It's about a, a young man played by uh, Angus Sampson here who is uh, coerced by my character into muling drugs from Thailand, heroin specifically. Um, he reluctantly agrees to do it. He swallows uh, 20 or 21... 2.2 uh, pounds. Yeah, 2.2 pounds of heroin in, the, in these packages, these condoms. You wrap it up, he swallows them all, gets back to Melbourne Airport, freaks out because he's nervous, and freaks out so much that the customs officials at the airport are like, right, we suspect you've got something in your stomach. They take <laughs> him aside, and his solution to the whole problem of the police waiting on him to produce the evidence is to not go to the toilet. Um, which is, which, that's where the true story comes in. A, a guy in New Zealand, I think in the early 90s, was caught at an airport in New Zealand, and the cops said, you know, we suspect you have drugs in your stomach. And he said, all right, well, I just won't go to the toilet. You won't have any evidence. And he actually held out for 21 days. Jeez. <gasps> not going. Wow. Is he alive? Like, how did He that... is alive. Okay. Eventually, eventually they came out and he was busted and they were there. And Angus and I just thought that was a really uh, kind of ingenious concept for a thriller. Like, the ticking yeah. clock of this movie yeah. is a guy's <laughs> bowels. <laughs> and... Um, and we're really hap happy with it, you know. We wanted to use this concept of someone not going to the toilet, not to mine it for comedy, but to actually mine it for a thriller. Usually, yeah. usually anything in movies that's to do with toilets or yeah. any anything to do with that is is usually mined for comedy, gross out humor. It's some guy who's taken a bunch of laxatives is on the the famous um, Jeff Daniels scene from Dumb and Dumber. We were wondering what if you took a subject like that and approached it like a Coen Brothers thriller where you, people were on the edge of the seat wondering when is this guy gonna take a shit. It's totally true, and when I watched it though, there was definitely one moment where I was like, oh, no, no, you'll know, you'll know what yeah, it is. There is yeah, there is yeah. a scene in the movie that everyone yeah. talks about. We don't, we, we probably don't want to ruin it. For no, 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 but, um, no, no, that it's, needs it's to be really a surprise. It's really hard to watch. Angus just got back from the London Film Festival and he told me there was a big uh, reaction from the audience during that scene. It, 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 I don't, well, without, without giving it away, I guess, it's such a, a ridiculous premise, uh, you know, and a perverse premise as yeah. well. Um, the reason he decides to try to not go to the bathroom is the law it states that without any evidence, he's not just being stubborn and petulant. He, he does actually have an end goal in sight, which is that without any evidence, the police have to let him go. But After seven days. They, yeah, they can only they, hold they, you without charge yeah. for seven and, days. And they can't x-ray him without his permission, and they can't inspect him internally without his permission. So they take him to a hotel room, they put him under lock and key for 24-7. Uh, they you know, stop the water, take out the taps, block the toilet, block the air conditioning units, lock the windows. And so there's this premise that, I guess that Lee was, you know, sort of alerted to me early on was, what an incredible jumping off point to, to you, 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 you can't stop your digestive system. It's like your heartbeat. So you have you have lethal narcotics inside you. You've got acid eating at them from the outset, 
and any of them perforate, you die immediately. And or you, get and superpowers, being, as we'll get, yeah. 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 Or you could get superpowers. Well, you could get superpowers. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he's also being watched 24 hours. There's yeah. never a moment when, he's, when they leave him in this room on his own. So the question becomes, how do you get out of a situation like that? You yeah. know? And also, to me, interestingly, can you root for a guy who's essentially a drug mule? Yeah. Yes, what he, you what can. he's done is wrong. Well, I mean, yes, you, like, you guys I mean, you guys have a lot of uh, experience in horror, and like a lot of the times the audience is sort of rooting for, you know, terror and scary right. and even even for the bad guy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I, that's just my clumsy segue into talking about, because we want to talk about Evil Dead before we run out of oh, time. Oh, of course. We should. Uh, but like, you know, they're, they're doing an Evil Dead TV series starring Bruce Campbell. First episode is going to be directed by Sam Raimi. As guys in the, in the horror genre, are you excited by that, or you feel like, what a sellout? I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm very excited that they're getting Bruce Campbell back. Because the thing for me is when they did the remake, I was disappointed. I mean, I don't want to be disparaging towards anyone else in the industry, but I was disappointed because I feel like they missed the key ingredient of an Evil Dead film is the humor, really. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the, the humor is what yeah. made the Evil Dead film so great. And they forgot that. They, it, was, it was just the gore, and I was disappointed by the remake. And so when I hear that they're doing a TV series, but they're taking it back to the Bruce Campbell character working at S-Smart. I, I'm so excited. I, I, if they're not going to make a film, then I'll take this consolation prize. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll watch it. And, and in some ways, it's better than a film because instead yeah. of a 90 minutes, you get 10 eps. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah, and I think they're, what, a half an hour each? Are I they guess. short? I don't, I don't know. I actually didn't see how, the How do you way. guys feel about it? Do you, uh, I, I, I want to know what happens to them. I totally want to know what happened to him. There's so many unexplored films. aspects of Evil Dead, like as a mythology. Right. You know, it's basically just the, the deadites are deadites and they do deadite <laughs> stuff. And what, what can't they do? I don't know. Deadite stuff? I don't know. Like, what, do you, what do you want? Like, there was, basically, there were no rules. Right. So I, that, my one concern is that it might almost be too confined in TV because now that we have so much time to delve into it, we're going to want to explain it all. And I right. kind of don't want it explained all, but I do want, I want it to be just about Ash. He is now, however old Bruce Campbell is, what is he, like 40? And like he's, he's <laughs> you might be a little older. Played it safe there, and I yeah. like it. Just to come on the show one day. Yeah. You're amongst friends, <laughs> um, but uh, but no, like I just want to see him as his charming douchebag self. That, that's, yeah. actually, actually, yeah. that's actually what I think is the more interesting angle for the TV show. Is don't make it about the Deadites. Make it about um, Ash, who you know from the first films, is now past middle age. He's still working at Esma. Maybe he's the manager now. His life hasn't. Make it about his personal issues and how his life, because you know he was a pretty grumpy character. I actually think that's a funny character to explore. Yeah. You know? Yeah, especially if you're going to root for somebody who's not yeah, the nicest yeah. person in the world, which is my clumsy segue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you see what I did there? Into okay, <laughs> into Doctor Doom. Okay, so Toby Toby Kebbell did an interview, um, and he explained the Doctor Doom that we're going to get in the Fantastic Four movie. His name is not Victor Von Doom. He is a blogger, and his handle is Doom. Now, okay, I'm I'm a comic book fan. I can I can handle retconning to a point, but this seems a little too clever to me. I love Doctor Doom. I think it's I think it's nowhere near clever. Yeah, well, I mean, that's me. clever in air quotes. But yeah. um, and look, when I did the show with with Stanley, that he would talk consistently about how he loves Doctor Doom, how he's a leader of Latveria, and he would say Latveria sounds like a real country, doesn't it? I can't do a good Stanley, but I don't know. <laughs> this is not a character you mess with. This it sounds like to me. This sounds like a, a filmmaker's revenge against the bloggers that have taunted him over yes. the years. Like I know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll make the villain a blogger, and that'll be my revenge. You yes. know. Um, uh, you know, like uh, like Birdman, you were talking about Birdman. Yeah, Man, Birdman a, a villain, is, is a villain a of the movie is a critic. Yeah, it's a, a lot of times. I think filmmakers, directors, or writers, they will take vengeance against their critics through the characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they'll make the idiot the critic. Or well, the, um, do you, ever, I, do you ever see the Raven? Mm-hmm. With no. the, the John Cusack no, movie. No, I never Edgar saw Allen that. Pa wait, wait. So, that's the one where he played Edgar Allan Poe solving yeah. crimes. Yeah, right. which is a cute idea, but like, there's a guy who gets pit in the pendulum, and then at the end it was like, well, uh, how, how, how bad is this? Should we talk to his family? And he's like, oh no, he was just a critic. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> in the theater a at a critic screening going, I'm right here. Like, what do you want from me? My favorite one is uh, with, with uh, the film Armageddon. I think they did an early screening of it at Cannes. And it's just the wrong place for a film like yeah. that, this big, dumb Hollywood action movie. And, of course, all the French critics were like, it is trash. And they, <laughs> they were laughing at it. And so they went and did a, a pickup on that film and destroyed Paris. Like, that was Michael Bay's <laughs> revenge. You see, you see, um, you see a, uh, an asteroid come down, literally 
big CGI shot of Paris blowing up, cut back to the sort of White House war room, and it's just blown off like, what happened? Paris just blew up. And the guy's like, meh, who needs the frogs anyway? <laughs> you know, like, it's just blown off. Like, I love that, that he's so petty that he... He went back and inserted a shot in the film just to get revenge against the film critics. Yeah. That's Paris. kind of awesome. Well, to be fair, we bloggers are sometimes evil. Well, I feel like they well, started uh-huh. with, what's the defining characteristic of Dr. Doom? Well, he's an egomaniac. Oh, I've got it. Like, that's the perfect <laughs> yes. job for this. It makes me want to see, you know, um, Charlie Kaufman, I, obviously he's a screenwriter I, I love, and he wrote a film that I don't think got made. It's called, um, you might know it, it's Frank or, it's, it's something like that. It's like Frank or Francis. I'm getting it terribly wrong, but... Mm. I don't think the film got made, but one of the characters was a film blogger. The story of the film, according to what I read online, was a blogger taunting a filmmaker. They were like enemies, and this guy just wouldn't stop jabbing at him. And uh, I really wanted to see that for that reason, to see his take on... Because it is a new world, isn't it? It used to be critics wrote for major newspapers. Now in the internet age, everyone's a critic, Mm. and, and somebody can... Not just kids at home who are like, I thought this sucked, but somebody can set up their own website and... Yep. Get themselves in the game. Get, get right. themselves in there. E- even if they haven't learned maybe the rules of propriety, or even just if you're on Twitter, yeah. you can just yell at someone like, I thought your movie sucked, James Cameron, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Really, have you found that with The Mule, though, Angus? Like, have you, because mostly it's been positive for The Mule, but have you found internet reviews coming from weird places? or? Um, well, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's like on anything you do. You end up, whenever we do a, a press tour, the... the the uh, interview interviewers get younger. Yeah. They get um, <laughs> that you know they get yeah, like twenty twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Thank you. Like um, Chris Campbell. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, younger and more unprofessional. It's like I think I have but, my oh I forgot my yeah, tape. Yeah. It's sort of in more and they happen yeah. in more stranger and stranger spaces where you sort of used to be you know on a phone or in a in a in a in a. Um, in a hotel room. Now it's like, oh, can we just do it in the stairwell? You know, <laughs> yeah. It's like, sure. Uh, you know, and it's like, not oh, creepy at I'm all. just recording it on, you know, uh, you know, on my Nokia. And you're like, <laughs> okay. And you're like, I guess you must be legitimate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm in front of Where are you from again? Yeah. Oh, uh, my basement. Uh, Fort John High School. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, Go back, go back to school. I'm your teacher. I'm your parents out the front. I mean, fundamentally, you end up, you know, how do you get ahead of the game? Yeah. When you start out, you know, do you do you have to be critical? You know, yeah. like actually, you know, or do you have to be really articulate and insightful? Well, I think you should be both. Honestly, you should be able to have a strong opinion about things, but then articulate it in a way that is, one, entertaining, and two... But when you sit down to write a a review, Mm -hmm. are are you there saying, you know what, I need to save my readers their time and energy? (laughs) Like, I need to warn them that this is a... I rarely had to warn anybody about a film. But, you know, for the most part, like, I'll try to to pull it apart, but... Um, it takes just as much energy to make a bad movie as it does to make a good one. And all those people put in all of that work. So uh, if, even if I don't like it, I'm still going to try to find the good and the bad yeah. about it. You know, I don't want to... I, I always try to take every film really seriously because, yeah. like, you know, it's, sometimes you have a limit of, like, it's 600 words, but they took, like, years to make some of these right. things. Yeah. The least you could do is think about it, even if you don't like it. Yeah. Even if you're trying yeah. to say, here's why I don't think this is worth your time and money, at the very least, these people tried to do something. Yeah. So you guys tried to do The Mule, and we want to thank you for that. Uh, I've seen it. I thought it was actually... <laughs> Actually, really, I really great. Uh, I, I actually do. I thought it was really suspenseful <laughs> and fun, totally and it's it. really different. And I really well, admire you. that. Is is it available right now, or is it coming out like I, it I comes out uh, November twenty first? Okay. In the states, it, it comes out uh, November twenty first on iTunes and on demand. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also comes out in, in Australia and Canada and, and Canada on the same day. Um, it'll be released in limited theaters in the states, but. Um, but uh, we're really keen to push the uh, the, the iTunes, you know, uh, VOD digital aspect of right. it, just because people anywhere can have access to it. You know, yeah. in some ways, I feel like digital release platforms have replaced the local independent theater. Yeah. Mm. Totally, that's yeah. where I watch independent films yeah. now. Is at home in the living room. Yeah. So, so um, we we uh, we really want uh, people to see it. And the trailer for the film is actually the third most watched trailer in the U.S. On the nice. on the well uh, Apple trailers page at the moment. Fantastic, so it's exciting. Man. That's, That's great. Great. That's great for you guys. It's great for your ass. And uh, <laughs> it is good for that. It. I have seen it. I'm pointing at her. And it's great for most great. So we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>